ALE Supremacy in Detroit. I'm Jim Van Horn. For the 24th time in their history, the Montreal Canadiens won the Stanley Cup last night. Winning the series at home was especially sweet, and the party should have been a celebration of Montreal's win on the 100th anniversary of the Cup, but it wasn't. Instead, the post-game celebrations turned into an orgy of violence and looting. Downtown Montreal was turned into a battle zone. Michael Whalen reports on what should have been a celebration, but wasn't. type of party around that we've had in years. But it's going to be a clean party. It's not going to be like last time. But that's not the way it turned out. 168 people were injured, including 49 police officers of the city of Montreal. 47 police vehicles were damaged. Eight were total write-offs. Several stores in and around the commercial center near St. Catherine Street were broken into and looted. Marked vans and automobiles from television stations and networks were completely trashed. Damage is estimated to be anywhere from eight to $12 million. Police say they made 115 arrests. Even though events mirrored in many ways what happened in 1986, police say that they were prepared as could be. First of all, we were there. Police officers were there. We were over 200, and in just half an hour, we were over 600. We made a lot of interventions, and the proof, we had over 100 arrestations. So I think it's a completely different dossier than the one we had in 86. But shop owners beg to differ. They took the brunt of the vandalism and violence, and they say the police should have known better. They were organized to steal. My belief, sir. That my belief. I'm telling you that I've seen it. I've seen the way they, they worked. The guy break a window and five guys go and take nobody stopped them. They steal the clothes, so. Hey, that's, that's organized. Today, people were cleaning up in the aftermath of what took place. Montrealers were still stunned and horrified by the whole affair. We have to be ashamed of that. Why don't they call the army? They knew that they will have trouble. It's really disgusting. I, I mean, we're really proud of the Montreal Canadiens that they won, but the fans really turned it everything really disgusting. That's the only word I can think of, disgusting. Oh, I think it's just disgusting, like, uh, to have something like this happen in a, such a, an easygoing city like Montreal, you know? Like, uh, the city is not known for big vandalism like this, and we're, we're in a, a time of joy, not in a time of sadness like this. So I think it's so embarrassing to the majority of the people that live here. Uh, it's a very minority bunch of bums who do that. Uh, it's not the real fans of the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, I've seen it happen in Detroit when the Tigers uh, won a few years back, and uh, it happened a few years ago in Chicago. It seems to happen everywhere. Uh, you know, when I use the word bum, I'm not exaggerating. They just wait for that right time to express themselves, and to them to express themselves is destroy other people's property. I have absolutely no respect whatsoever for people who do that. It was uh, really obvious that uh, we were not to punish the, 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 the millions of fans, of Canadians fans here in Montreal and in the area that want to, and mostly those who want to really celebrate with us in uh, dignity, I would say, and come to the parade tomorrow. So that, that's, why the reason, uh, that's the reason why uh, the parade will take place uh, as announced, but uh, although we had to modify the, the itinerary. The parade route will stop here at the corner of Cotonage and Sherbrooke Street. That's one block north of the commercial center. Now it's easy to point a finger at the city of Montreal, but let's face it, hooliganism is now an international phenomenon, and the police in this city say that they had to make a choice between saving lives and saving property. They opted for the former, and they say they can live with that decision. Michael Whalen, TSN in Montreal. Inside the forum last night, the Canadians were taking care of business, knocking off the Los Angeles Kings 4-1 and winning the Stanley Cup four games to one. They may not, been, may not have been the best team on paper, but Montreal was the best team on ice this spring and was full value for their win, not only last night, but throughout the playoffs. After losing the first two games against their arch rivals, the Canadians faced a must-win game three at the Forum. The game went into overtime, and it was the start of something special. When you were down to the Quebec, what was it that pulled it together for this team? Uh, well, we knew we were coming back home and that uh, we haven't really lost any ground. If we just won our two games at home, we'd be all right. So, uh, you know, that was the turning point, game three in overtime, and then everything just seemed to go from there. By the time...
game six rolled around, the Battle of Quebec had turned into a slaughter, and Montreal had cleared a big hurdle. In round two, the overtime magic continued for Montreal, and the Habs swept the Sabres aside, winning all four games by one goal. For the first time since 89, they were going to the conference final. In the Wales final, Les Canadiens continued to roll on, and after winning game three in overtime on Long Island, Montreal had won 11 straight in the postseason and were well on their way to the Stanley Cup final. The Cup final was not only a return to glory for the Canadians, it was also a renaissance for Patrick Awa. His superb play earned him the Conn Smythe Trophy for the second time in his career. Awa becomes only the fifth player to win the playoff MVP twice. Patrick made some key saves for us. He deserves the Conn Smythe. I think he played great. And, uh, you know, everybody played really good, and that's what we won. It's a big family in here. Everybody plays for one another, and, and uh, you know, we played, uh, we played solid throughout the playoffs. But Waugh might not have had the chance to be the hero if not for a gutsy call by Jacques Demers in Game 2. That was a gutsy move by Jacques calling that stick when, uh, with a minute and a half left. We would have been down two games going to L.A. and an awful lot of trouble. I think that turned things around, made us believe in ourselves going to L.A. It was still two games. That was it. We're living a dream. For the two games in Los Angeles, the Habs turned to their secret weapon, overtime. Their OT streak in this postseason was nothing short of amazing. Those 10 overtime wins, it's, uh, it is mind-boggling. Uh, There's no question about it. You can't explain it. The odds of that are, uh, are slim to none. The same could be said for the Kings' chances of winning last night's game, as Montreal simply dominated in clinching its 24th Stanley Cup title. There's a lot of tradition here. And I tell you, the people were right behind us, and they're, they get so excited here. and. Uh, we're a great place to play, and uh, we're happy for the people because they love hockey so much, and, and uh, it's just a great feeling. I just think the character of this team came through, and we all pulled together, and we found each other. The preparation, and just the hurt. I mean, you look around this room, all the famous players, and it, there is character, and it really, it really helps you. Something else that also helped the Canadiens, their faith in head coach Jacques Demers. We played for him. He, he deserved it more than anybody. We played for him, and uh, he's a great coach. He comes and plays all his players. He has confidence in everybody. And uh, without it, I make a few mistakes out there. And when he, he keeps on coming back to me, and I wanted to prove him right. From Richard to Savard, from Lafleur to Leclerc, the names on the back of the jerseys may change, but the results stay the same. Joining us now for On the Beat from the Montreal Gazette is Michael Farber. Michael, the Canadian said last night after their win that their victory this season was a team win. And when you look at their lineup, it certainly was. Well, there really is only one superstar, Jim. That's Patrick Waugh, and if everyone on a team is created equal, Patrick Waugh was a little more equal than others. I mean, he joined some great names as a two-time Conn Smythe Trophy winner. He didn't have a shutout in the playoffs except in overtime when it counted most. He certainly was the leader of this team on the ice. Michael, once again, even in defeat, Wayne Gretzky managed to steal a little bit of the spotlight by alluding to the fact that uh, maybe it's time for him to hang up his skates and retire. Well, Gretzky stole the spotlight, some fans stole some televisions. It was a saw-off, what was the biggest story around here. In Montreal, the biggest story, of course, is the riot. Wayne Gretzky's retirement is all well and good, if that is indeed what he wants to do. But people are here are very concerned with what went on after the game. There's a lot of disappointment about what happened. It happened in 86, it happened in 93. There's a certain conceit in Montreal that we're different, that we're better, that we're not like other cities. Well, now I think there's obvious proof that we are. We're the